We are here in Keldingadalir. We are in the magnificent top stone. Comfort of my home. Where is the volcano that started uh, in March. Uh, top stone has been our home now for... You can see that crater over there. And outside my window here is the garden where we sat on the day of the first concert that we ever played as a band. Basically active at the moment. Spews out every every few minutes. Almost exactly 13 years ago. We had a heart here. We're looking over a, a lava field, a fresh lava field. Uh, I partly had my job here. I got my freshly brewed coffee. Big part of uh, our lives has been making music and being inspired by uh, the atmosphere of Topstead. Well, for the last two years we, we couldn't do what we usually do, which is tour uh, around Europe and, and other places. When the lockdown started and the whole world started socially distancing, we distanced from everyone except our closest family and each other. So we were in our small house theater bubble. We basically didn't hang out with anyone else. So we just stayed in the studio and started writing songs. We decided since we're not allowed to go out, not allowed to meet people, then the best way to spend time was writing songs. Everyone had a hard time during the pandemic, but maybe because it was so hard, we had so much to write about. Creativity started to sort of flow in, so we just started writing without any agenda. And before we knew it, we had 30 songs, 30 new songs. We just ended up writing 30 songs. The most creative uh, period of uh, Austria's life. When the pandemic hit, all our plans just went out the window. There was a tour after a tour that was just completely cancelled, which was really frustrating. We didn't know when we could start making plans again. But we kind of just kept it down to keep the expectations low. We just focused on the only thing we could focus on, which is to write and compose music. And after a while, we sort of just got into it. The pandemic gave us breathing space, time to experiment, to reinvent ourselves a little bit. Didn't really know what to do with this at first because we were writing a lot of music and a lot of different kinds of music that maybe didn't necessarily all fit together. So yeah, we just wanted to make a decision first. What do we do with all this material? How do we present it to you guys? But now that we are able to make plans again, then we can finally start revealing those plans to you. We just felt we had so many good songs on our hands that it was impossible to just pick 12 to go on one album. And also we had a lot of different songs. Folk songs, pop songs, electronic songs. And we just decided to have it more like themed albums. And that made much more sense to have it as a, like a, a bit themed, the, the album. So they now fit better together. And in hindsight, it's, it's just very valuable to be able to tell the story with two chapters, Pantut and Blick. There are two obvious differences between those two albums, Pentel and Blake, we're making. The Pentel, the first one, is all in Icelandic, and the second one will be entirely in English. Pentel is classic Austria territory. It's really the album that the Austria fans have been asking us to do for quite some time. Pentel is, in, in some ways, a, a heavier album. It's dark, it's melancholic, and contains some of our most dramatic songs ever. Bigger arrangements, darker arrangements. We are going a little bit back to basics, so it maybe sounds a little bit the way we did in the past, but with, with new uh, additions. Blake, on the other hand, is something quite different. Blake will be have more of the pop elements. Pantut is winter and Blake is summer. Blake sounds a little bit more upbeat. Blake is going to be an album that makes you want to stand up, dance. And we hope that will sit well with you guys because that's really new to us too. Ironically, the pandemic gave us a lot of time to write music, left us with very few means with which to record this music. Basically, our main source of income is when we tour and play live. When that's taken away, that's not much left. And ironically, we're coming out of this pandemic more ambitious than ever. And we want to get this material out to you guys, but our hands are tight. We can re you know, write, we can arrange, but uh, the final product takes so much more to get done. And we've always had high standards for the sounds of our albums. And now, of course, we don't want to make an album that is less ambitious or that isn't as well sounding just because we've had a pandemic. We frankly cannot do this on our own. So 
That's why we're asking for your help to make this a reality and make it as good as we want it. We could make a cheap album, but for, for us, that's never been an option. We've always wanted to live up to the standard of, of our previous works. I guess we want to beat the odds here and um, prove that this can be done, but it can only be done with your help. But besides the mere fact that crowdfunding allows us to uh, make these albums financially, there are other benefits as well. What I really like about the crowdfunding is also just the, the engagement with the audience of Austria. It's like the crowdfunding becomes an extension of the art universe. The audience get to participate a bit more. It's, it's so much more than just buy our album. It incentivizes us to tell the story of Pantut and Blake beyond the, the music and the, and the lyrics. A way of being creative, we can, we can engage more with the fans. This worked really well for us when we made our third album, Kvel. And I think one of the reasons why this album, Kvel, stands out so much and why so many people have a, a connection to it is because we did this crowdfunding. The album Kvel has a story shared with, with thousands of people. And that creates something beyond the music that we share with the people who listen to our music. I don't know how much people know about making an album, but for an example, Austria, we've always, always done like quality number one, two, and three. So we never make any compromises. Not only do we try to write great songs, we also try to get our, our albums to sound as good as possible. But this is a costly game, even in our modern day and age. We really go all in the recordings, uh, we go all in the mastering, all in the mixing, so we never make any compromises of like, cutting corners because it's cheaper. We hire string quartets to play on our albums. We hire live rooms where we can record the strings with a natural sound. There's string arrangements, there are there's mixing, there is producing. We pay our producer Sakaris, who's been with us and uh, working on the demos throughout the pandemic. It's renting a studio, it's renting an equipment. Developing the artwork and doing all the graphic design. And we spend a lot of time and resources mixing our albums. Yeah, it, it is. It is. The mixing is really ambitious. Um, as we've always sort of been with, with our albums, uh, we, we don't take the easy way out, not the cheap way out. And uh, Magnus Öter is one of the most experienced, most respected mixing engineer in Iceland. He's worked with major numbers in Iceland. Well, probably if you've heard of it, Magnus has probably worked with him. He has this accuracy, this delicacy, which you don't really find in the industry anymore. Because now everything is about speed. Everything is about getting things done. Magnus won't play by those rules. Uh, Magnus is going to take his time and, you know, make it spectacular. And one of my favorite rewards is like the studio, <laughs> the doorknob. Yeah, just the doorknob of our studio, which is like, uh, it's very personal to us because we've been going in that studio to record in a place that we love and had made so much impact on the albums. And we're also saying goodbye to our beloved Topston because the city is taking it back and closing it down. We're gonna have throwaway cameras. With the flash. Basically, each member takes a few cameras and, and takes the shots that they feel like, you know, represents what they wanna, wanna put out there. Uh, documenting our lives. Once you develop it, you will see what we've been up to. We're gonna have Polaroid pictures. The Polaroids, they're super cool. Every Polaroid that we take is like, is a moment. In keeping with the concept of Pantot and Blake, which is the perception of time, we've been playing around with these mediums, visual mediums, that somehow transcend time or induce a sense of timelessness and nostalgia. That's why we did the uh, wet collodion process for the cover of Pantot, and we're selling the actual glass plate that the band photo was shot on. The, the glass photo is, of course, totally amazing. And that's also like the doorknob, it's one item only. We are going to have a limited choice for you to ask us to write you your song, a song for you. One of my favorites is the seven episode podcast that we're going to make right up to the release of the second album, Blake. We'll tell you about every aspect of the making of, of uh, these two albums and maybe throw in a few uh, stories from way back when too spice things up and, and the and the cups they are a very special item we have been drinking out of those cups now for uh, probably five or six years 
and they are a big part of our, our band. So I definitely recommend having uh, Daniel Gunnar and Ragnar Cup. We've always been a bit of a secretive band when it comes to creating. But for the next few months, we're going to change that. We're going to open the curtains a little bit and allow you to sit in on some of our studio sessions via a web link. Attending some uh, session with Austi is also really great because like some of you, you don't know, you know, you, you get the music, but you maybe don't realize how it's made and how much process is behind it. So being with us in the studio a bit and you know, you ask some questions of how we do things or how we think of things and how we work together, that's, that's really amazing. We're gonna make things interesting if the crowdfunding campaign goes as well as we hope it will. So we're gonna put an extra stretch score. The a cappella stretch score is a really good one. Ever since we sang Heir Himna Smyrður in the train station, uh, you guys have been asking us to record an a cappella album and with more songs in the style of Heir Himna Smyrður. So we think we might finally be ready to, to make that commitment. And we could do that with a little extra money to, to get that done. We'll reach that uh, limit and then us Austria guys will go start practicing and practicing and practicing and then record some really nice a cappella songs. We hope you'll enjoy this crowdfunding campaign with us and that you'll join us for this journey of seeing Pantut and Blink 